Okay, this is the second video or the last video on the use of silverfish as model organism. <clears throat> so these two videos, 2A and 2B, and this is 2B, is designed for teaching in a cell and molecular biology class uh, of model organisms. So we have previously mentioned mainly the examples of using silverfish to study cancer. And then in this uh, video, we cover many different examples and we start from developmental studies. My name is KM, KM Chen in the School of Life Sciences, Chinese University of Hong Kong. Now, uh, developmental studies, I'll uh, give you one example. It's quite interesting. Actually, eye cell development and shaping. I have known many uh, Chinese, uh, they have uh, myopia, you know, gan si. And just like you say this as an example, you may say, okay, a fish eye is very different from human eye, but at least they could be good developmental model for human diseases and eye development is one of them for well, eye cell development and shaping and uh, so like this uh, photo taken from uh, this paper developmental patterning of rock and cone photoreceptors in embryonic uh, silverfish because the silverfish embryo is transparent so we may trace this uh, different uh, uh, rocks cells and see how they could be uh, recruited and then uh, you can follow the developmental uh, uh, regulation of the genes and those uh, cell lineages okay and uh, of course the most uh, well studied perhaps is the rest cells uh, we call this the hematopoietic cells there are different kinds of cell types developing into the rep cell or uh, the white cells and different kinds of white cells and uh, interestingly fish uh, both white cells and red cells they have nuclei okay on the left hand side we have the uh, bone marrow model for mouse and then uh, fish is quite uh, different from uh, mammals without using the bone marrow uh, we could get the caudal hematopoietic tissues or CHT at the tail of the fish at 48 hour post fertilization for the HPF. And from here, you may dissect the tissues out and then obtain these uh, different cell lineages and then uh, select them and study them one by one. And uh, there's another uh, example is for the uh, skin cells. Now, skin scale is uh, of importance uh, because of the uh, tan or the color development. As, as you know that uh, silverfish has a uh, false stripe, so uh, scientists have been uh, studying uh, the organization of these uh, different uh, cells with different color, uh, fine-tuning into the stripes and, and pattern in silverfish. You know that the silverfish is known as a Seikan Bama, you either have a four stripe from the body down to the tail and the fins. So with that you can see this cross section in zero week, and that's not zero week, three week old, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You can see that the stripe gradually develop. Now first we have a nine there, and then there's a uh, interface in between the two dark swipes and then first with these two dark bands and then further developing into four and that is it okay so for more details you may take a look at this paper from science okay or read more here in uh, other online instructions I'll give you details of this step at the, at the larvae of five day post fertilization here. We start to see this uh, sample force, okay, proliferation. Okay, and then these cells started to grow around uh, uh, two week post fertilization. We start to see the formation of this inter swipe that is uh, in between two dark bands. And then the swipe formed leading into the formation of new inter stripes okay this is the new inter stripe and then 
Then you can see up to seven week for fertilization, the metamorphic balanophore growing up here to form these two lines. Okay, remember the two and then this build up and then into four stripes. Okay. Later on in the whole body. So when we take a look at the details of these cells, you can see uh, that the uh, human pigment cell would perhaps have the same effect or same phenomenon. You can see for example we have the uh, dermis oh, Dermis and uh, the, oh, and the dermis and uh, basement and uh, basement and bing and then this is the dermis. We have the epidermis. So the cell layers in human and these on the skin similarly on silverfish, we are talking about uh, these uh, different cell types with different color. Okay. Oh, sorry, and then this uh, this uh, at least uh, we have a uh, sample force, and that erato force with uh, green or different colors, and also the melanocytes. All right, so three day uh, post fertilization, we start to see the interstripe, and you started to see the formation. Interestingly, is up there with some uh, melanocytes. Okay, so what is happening here? So where do these cells come from? It's actually from neuron or from neural crest cells. And that is the top line there, p-metamorphic stage, and then post-metamorphic stage, and then all those uh, neural crest line uh, cells would migrate to the area. So that is to say that uh, where do these cells come from? The dark cells come from there, from the neural crest, and then they migrate into here. The inner swipe and also the uh, sample four are trying to line them up or align them up together. So in this case, you can see that the neural crest cells would develop into these uh, neurons and neurons are guiding these the different uh, cells and then they would be going into different locations. As you can see that this is uh, Zipperfish, Daniel Ririo these are the pattern I've just explained to you but then for the other 10 new species remember uh, in previous videos okay I can, uh, yeah that should be 1A uh, we also mentioned a different uh, body pattern or skin pattern of the stripes and they are actually guided from the neural crest cells and the neuron to guide the formation of these uh, different landed force in forming these uh, different uh, fish uh, uh, pigment pattern. And for example, this is uh, Daniel Rewheel forming this four stripes, okay? The first recessive mutation study in uh, silverfish actually was found as a gene known as golden. As you can see that, uh, color become golden. So for some unknown reason, Actually, the golden gene uh, is still not known how it works. You can see that the melanocyte could not migrate to the particular region. Like here, you can see a lot of uh, melanocytes, but here, in this mutant, we don't. Okay. There are also other candidate genes, including this one, uh, SLC224A5, is a perpetrative cation exchanger that would play a role in uh, controlling skin pigmentation. This is also being tested in human. Okay, so what control the melanin? Melanin is a protein on our skin. Or in other words, how do we get our tan, you know, our skin color? There are different, uh, you know, sun tan. And uh, how do we get this kind of sun tan? Why don't other people, well, while some people would, like myself, I could easily get sun tan. But, um, other people would get red instead of suntan. So you can imagine that it's a very important uh, uh, dermatological uh, issue, okay, and also multi million dollar uh, uh, um, project. So uh, scientists are still working on it. I'll give you more details of those uh, different uh, patterns and also 
involving different genes. You can see that the tools are there. This is a paper a little bit old, but you can see that's how we have this control. We can study the amount of melanocytes aggregating together on the swipe. And then you may use that to study a different gene expression pattern by tackling the target genes with uh, GFP and so on to see how these cells migrate. Okay, and uh, these are still uh, being used uh, as a tool to study uh, the formation of uh, melanin in the melanocytes and how these melanocytes migrate or how do we get the suntan. All right, and that is. Uh, active uh, area of research. Okay, other than the uh, melanocytes, uh, we also use uh, silverfish to study uh, dysplasia and also uh, skeletal dysplasia and developmental delay. Uh, this is called lance deficiency because a lockdown of a gene or overlock of a silverfish called nansa encoding uh, enzyme known as sialic acid synthase and then the embryos would have uh, developed abnormal skeletal development and also uh, similar to the uh, human patient's uh, phenotype however you may rescue the symptom by adding sialic acid to the culture so it is a possible treatment that we may use this uh, chemical or sialic acid uh, extreme in patients. Now this is a pathway for synthesizing this uh, uh, chemical. This chemical is known as allic acid, it's actually neuraminic acid. So this is uh, sugar linking with different uh, acid okay, on, as the side chain. So we would imagine a very complicated structure. Actually it's controlled by this gene NANSA. And then uh, uh, is actually an acetyl neuraminic acid synthase. So this is the enzyme here leading to the formation of this uh, 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 neuro, neuraminic acid and that would be transport into this step for what we call silylation using this enzyme silyl transferase. There are also other steps known as the silylation that may remove these uh, 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 steps. But with that, the key point is that we may do a morpholinic lockdown of this gene so that you have a morpholinic lockdown control. Uh, actually, you don't lock down anything, or this one is locked down. You can see the skeletal development uh, deficiency here, leading to a edema here. And then uh, you may add sialic acid back and then you can see the uh, this control not injected or the injected one and then you add or rescue the mutant fish or the not down fish with uh, different sialic acid a different concentration and then the uh, structure become uh, normal okay and uh, you can see this is how the uh, percent of the cartilage uh, phenotype uh, you may count the number of, uh, of this is a, a comparison not injected or the control injected with uh, 200 micromolar of xylic acid or the morpholinic lockdown uh, you can see this is uh, one uh, not doing well but at least it's better than uh, not doing any injection so but the chemicals could not 100 percent recover the symptom uh, so uh, more research is needed to be done uh, to really find out those developmental problems. Uh, we do have more interesting story on uh, part four: neurodegenerative disease and behavioral disease. By using camera and the software, the software basically 20 years ago or even longer than that, we could track sperm to swim right in in mutual fertilization lab and then with similar software we may develop those uh, tracking 
This is the control, the wild type, and the soft fin and silverfish swimming around. And sometimes they use this Leopard string. And you can see that the Leopard string, I suppose I have mentioned that in, uh, in uh, video 1A, on the different uh, phenotypes of uh, silverfish. And then uh, they already have different swimming patterns that could be traced. So the technique is very straightforward. You just have a fish tank there, and then you have a camera here to capture over a few hours how they swim, or even within 10 to 30 minutes, their swimming pattern. Okay, so we may study drugs. That's the power of superfish in the fish tank. You may have a chronic use of drug or ethanol or morphine to study these uh, anxiolytic uh, treatments. Uh, that is for the uh, uh, anxiety treatment or uh, anxiogenic treatment, not lytic, but anxiogenic or panicogenic substance that you may add and make them more, you know, become more unstable. You can see that uh, they feel more anxiety, actually they don't swim. So what do they do? You can see the pattern here of this uh, leopard swing because they, are, they, 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 they have a different swimming pattern but they do come up to the upper part of the tank but then these guys here, you can see that they, uh, they feel more and they have, they have more feeling of anxiety so they don't swim, they don't come up to the top Okay, so you can see here this alarm pheromone that you may add a chemical and then they even don't like to come up to the top and then repeated morphine, these are different drugs, you add morphine and then you withdraw morphine, morphine, uh, more morphine, and then you may see and compare this with this with the anxiolytic treatments. You can see for this guy, with the chronic uh, fluorocetin, you can see the fish keep coming up. Okay, so already there are different treatments and different uh, chemicals available as control. So you may use this to study with those uh, various uh, swimming patterns and uh, traced by video. And you may study the use of this uh, chronic uh, peroxetine and uh, latency to top and then uh, transition to top up actually drop down to very low, meaning that they do not go up to the top. Okay, so you can see and compare, we see whether the treatment and the uh, manual uh, registration or also using this automatic registration, you may use a camera and then you take a, to take, to take a video and then use a program uh, to do this kind of essay. And if you want to learn more about this essay, you may take a look at this paper from Nature Protocol. And this is a very common method. Now most people use to study different behavior, including memory function. Most commonly used to test for seizures, you know, seizures, the ding gan jing. And also testing of the drug of this uh, uh, PTZ induced uh, seizure model. And then uh, you can see this uh, tetrazo or pentylene uh, tetrazo treatment that would cause uh, seizures. And then they use this special tank here. This is a locomotion behavior tank. And then at the end there, you develop this, uh, what we call is a deeper chamber here. The wrong arm or right arm, they tend to, if they are normal, they tend to go to the deeper chamber. If they go into the wrong one, that means they have scissor, they could not go to the deeper chamber. So with that, you may uh, test them first, you release them and then uh, see whether they know where to go and then after that you keep them and then you may use chemical to induce a scissor and then you may test and you did a T-mass uh, analysis and then uh, from different exposure and different treatment and then you study their swimming behavior first and then later on of course at the end of the experiment you obtain those animals uh, and then uh, you remove them for brain harvesting and doing those uh, neurotransmitter or gene expression studies at the end. You may also use this for studying MPTP induced uh, Parkinson's disease in silverfish. 
And um, in pelicans, it's, it's how do we study pelicans in fish? We study this uh, what we call free symbols. That means they tend to be, or they should be swimming around like that. So if they do not swim without any pattern, they just become frozen. Then they become frozen, then they become those uh, lumbers of freezing butts. Okay? So it's like control, they keep swimming, but then if they stop, of course this must be done using those uh, video taping. Okay? And then we end up having different genes and then locking them down and see whether they are associated with this, what we call zebra fish uh, Parkinson model, and they have this uh, different swimming pattern. And then uh, this, I uh, can't remember the difference between M1 and M2. I think these are different drugs. Yeah, the different concentration of the drug uh, of the MPTP, low dose and high dose, and see the high dose, you can see that, that the fish become a lump of courses and uh, if, if, if you don't apply the drug, uh, the fish seems to be active but you apply more drug then they become you know, less active all right? and you may consider that as uh, also measuring them as a freezing but and uh, or freezing duration, different parameters could be studied and if we study the Parkinson disease and the association with different genes <coughs> Uh, another one is uh, CLM3 ATG morpholino uh, or morphins uh, ab abnormal brain and heart morphology. And in this case, uh, this is the left hand side, the wild type. And this is the uh, morpholino injected. You can see the different phenotype change. More. If this is not a lethal thing, but then you can see this is the edema forming. And then the uh, heart morphology, okay, this is a normal heart, this is the larger heart, okay? And then you can study these uh, uh, phenotypes. And uh, actually, this is related to this uh, lysosome or lysosomal storage disorder in the tissues of, uh, of the brain here and the heart, okay? And you may also use the same technique and then uh, to study uh, epilepsy, okay? Uh, with the same disease model, uh, you may study epilepsy. And uh, these are the different, uh, uh, this is uh, the wild type, and then you can see the Mopolino treatment. And then of this particular gene, you can see this uh, epilepsy, and the behavioral changes, all right? So you can synchronize activity and then study their phenotype, okay? That is uh, to study those uh, the heart movement or EGG, the histogram of the heart, okay? And this is a new model of uh, pattern disease due to the uh, mutation or knockdown of this gene of the CLN3 and develop into this uh, phenotype and then you may quantify those data by doing those uh, EGG uh, uh, the uh, uh, electrogram of those uh, heartbeat uh, pattern and you may do drug impacts on neurons this is an example of a neuron you can see that obviously uh, the control is the normal one, and then you apply different concentration of cadmium, k -type. So the effects of cadmium actually bring about neurodegenerative. You can see the neuron here is not extended enough, and also the notochord is not uh, fully developed. Uh, by staining those uh, neurons with uh, GFP, other than neurons, we may also study out, previously we also mentioned the heart. So um, at last, I would like to show you, uh, or second to the last uh, example, I would like to show you about the measuring of heart rate. If you have ever observed a zebra fish, you could actually appreciate the heartbeat of zebra fish even at its embryonic development. Uh, that is to say, once the heart got developed uh, perhaps after one day 
you can see the heartbeats, okay? You may count the heart rate per minute, you know, heart rate, really fast. Over time, to 20 minutes, or for a few hours, and then you can see the effects of the heartbeats. The original heartbeats at the control is about 150, but then uh, after a long while, the heartbeat would drop. Okay? This is a very sensitive model for uh, studying cardiovascular disease. Give me one example is the effects of caffeine, caffeine. Caffeine is well known to, uh, inhib to inhibit this uh, 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 receptor here, adenosine uh, receptor. Okay, this would bring in adenosine and bring about those uh, signaling pathway. I'm not here to introduce those uh, signaling pathway. I'm just introducing the use of caffeine with different concentrations, and then over time, these are the different concentrations, and then you see 25 millimolar. Over time, the heart rate drops significantly. Okay, 4, 8, 10, 12, and 25 different concentrations, time for complete secession, meaning that uh, a higher dose, the time for them to uh, have a cardiac arrest, okay, very shortly, a uh, few minutes, uh, heartbeat's gone, or uh, decrease the heart rate in uh, 15 minutes, you can trace a very nice time and dose response relationship. Okay, so we can see how sensitive this method is uh, as I explained to you before. Uh, many scientists are using this to uh, test uh, drugs including Chinese medicinal herbs because it's already in a solution. You may just add into the water and see how they could protect our heart or counteract the effect of caffeine. I'm using caffeine as an example but uh, uh, by no means it's only the one chemical being tested. Many different drugs were also test because uh, we can monitor blood vessels and blood flow easily. You can see the green are those uh, 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 bone segments, you can see the bone, and then the blood vessels stained in red, and they could stain different uh, red cells with uh, RFP or with uh, GFP for the bone. And then with that, you can study the iota, iota stenosis. Uh, it is the narrowing of the blood vessel. They use this uh, special model known as uh, uh, CASPA, a transparent mutant. You can see this zebra fish. You do not see the force right? So then you can observe the uh, you can observe the uh, the blood vessels easily. So this is the uh, wild type, and this is the uh, mutant of PKD2 knockdown. This is uh, heterozygous, I mean, sorry, homozygous. And then uh, you can see those uh, butt muscles. That is the heart, and then that is the aorta valve uh, developed, and then this is thinner than the control. You can see the red cells going through, and so you can see the blockage of the red cells here. Okay? That's another example. And finally, we uh, discuss this last model. In fact, I'm thinking of asking you to do uh, for the final exam, perhaps to write a research proposal uh, on how to use this fish model for studying aging, okay? Human aging in uh, 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 big issues or uh, those uh, elderly, they have many different disease developed. The wonderful critical thing of aging is about the telomeres. Okay, so this paper on the telomeres in aging and disease, uh, we can learn a lot from superfluids. Uh, I use this as an example to uh, study uh, 0.3 years, that is about uh, four months, over to two years. A very old fish, okay? And then you can study that by spreading out over time the different tissues and then for the different tissues you study or they study a telomere size you know the telomere is at the end of the chromosome you may do PCR 
on different tissues to confirm the length of the telomere. You can see soft telomere is the represented in the darker red or brown color. And then you can see that, that in given tissues, you may study a systemic signal of soft telomere dysfunction are found in those uh, old fish. Okay. Uh, another example is to study regeneration. Okay. And uh, one of the hallmarks of the fish is that we may use uh, silver fish for the study of regeneration. One of the examples is the use of this uh, quail injury. So you have this uh, frozen needle to touch up on the heart. Wild type, and then this is the mutant, three days after the injury, and then 60 days after the injury. You can see the wild type with all those different tissues repaired. Then the regeneration and restoration of function of the heart. But however, this particular mutant, after a quiet injury, and then from fibrosis and also impaired ventricular pumping efficacy, could not be restored. Okay, and then of course you may also uh, think of other uh, experiment that could be used uh, in silver uh, fish. With that, I think I have uh, made uh, clear enough with those uh, numerous examples, okay? So, uh, actually, we can use silver fish for screening, and that is very important. Better than other in vitro, now this is an in vivo study because of the small size of the fish, because of the huge amount of transgenic lines and the huge amount of offspring that we can be paired. It's a living organism, so it's an in vivo model. It's a diurnal species. Diurnal species that mean that uh, only day and night difference. So they sleep at night and then they become very active in the daytime. Unlike other fish, they have a strong seasonal biology. Okay, uh, they do not perform uh, 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 the same in different months. But for silver fish, every day they are the same. So we call it diurnal species. There are different studies like uh, Parkinson's disease, we may do gene expression, we may do a blood brain barrier, I don't have time to uh, go over it. Cost effective and low volume of drug. On fish tank, we only apply a uh, drug at low dose, and rapid and reliable, so it's a good model. And uh, we can study development or with rapid development. Uh, also, we have mentioned in previous video, high fecundity and soft generation time. So that, we may study this uh, with different transgenic disease model from heart disease, uh, vascular tract models, the liver model, uh, 